and welcome in here at James Cotter Field. It might be picking up on the mic. It's always a nice afternoon when you have Motley Crew blasting across the speakers. It's a Friday afternoon here on Beaconville. All of the students more or less just finished their classes and are about to start spring break, so the vibes are high. Unfortunately, right now, not riding quite as high with the UMass Boston lacrosse team. A 1-3 start in their first four games, and they're just coming off a very tough 12-goal loss at the hands of the Connecticut College Camels. But they're looking to reverse their fortunes this afternoon, and the opposition, the Norwich University Cadets. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris Del Sordo. Thank you for tuning into the Beacon Broadcasting Network. A very crucial non-conference matchup here today as the Beacons are looking to flip the tide a little bit. Offense has been kind of hard to come by, and it was just six goals in the game against Connecticut College. Let's pull up the side-by-side -side season statistics. Comparing the Beacons and the Cadets up to this point in the season, Norwich 1-2 and two in three games played. Stats fairly similar if you parse them across each game. But for Norwich, they've taken, uh, they've scored 30 goals on the season, averaging 10 per contest. The Beacons averaging 12 a game with their 48 goals on the season. Slightly better shooting percentage for the Cadets. They're a bit more efficient out there, shooting 28%. The Beacons just above 26%. Beacon's not that sharp picking up the ground balls, just 107. That's only 27 a game. Meanwhile, Norwich averaging over 32 ground balls a contest. That really bit the Beacons in the last home game that we were here for last Thursday against the MIT Engineers. They just couldn't pick up those loose balls. It translated into a lot of transition goals. That's going to be something the Beacons need to focus on cleaning up. But... Silver lining, and this bodes very well for the Beacons. The faceoff percentage has been good between Jason McNini and Matt Lucozzi in the faceoff circle. The Beacons well over the 50% mark. Norwich a rough go of it in their first three games in the faceoff circle, just barely skirting above 44%. So hopefully the Beacons can make some salt in the faceoff circle and translate that into an extra goal or two. We have the starting lineups for you here, and we'll pull them up first for the Beacons. We'll get that up for you momentarily here. It is some familiar names, but a lot of new names in important fixtures in this roster. Remember, you lose Michael Claflin, Dara Fahey, and Donovan Prasinski to graduation, and you still don't have Jason, or pardon me, Jacob Banks back in from him finishing up his hockey season. So where's the goal scoring going to come from? For the Beacons, Connor Smith has been a revelation. The grad transfer out of Oakland, Maine. He gets the start today. The team's leading scorer, Gavin Admiran, 13 goals and 10 assists. You will see him in the attack zone as well. The All-American Luke Murphy getting the start at midfield. Sean Culloch getting the start today, the sophomore, at long stick midi. Jack Ranta going to be next to him, the other long stick midi. Pat Carey, Pat Colburn, as usual, the central defenders for the Beacons. It's Trevor Coppy again, his fifth start in five games in net for the Beacons. Matt Lucozzi is your face-off specialist, and Greg Wolf going to be the final attack man on the field for the Beaks. For Norwich, their big goal scorer, Coley Bagwell, will get the start on the attack. He's from York, Pennsylvania, played at Central York High School. Eight goals through three games for big number 88 on Norwich. <laughs> Hear that horn right there, which means we're about a minute away from getting these festivities started here at Cotter Field. We're going to throw it, going to keep it right here. You can listen in to the starting lineups and the national anthem. And once that's done, guys, we're going to hop right into it. Non-conference lacrosse, the Norwich Cadets, your UMass Boston Beacon starting in 40 seconds here at Cotter Field.
is an unconference men's across matchup between the visiting cadets of Norwich University and your UMass Boston Beacons. At this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. And there you have it, the National Anthem coming to a conclusion. It is a beautiful afternoon out here on the peninsula on Beaconville at James Cotter Field. Your 1-3 UMass Boston Beacons looking for a big and a rather crucial win number two in their fifth game, hosting the 1-2 Norwich University Cadets. It was a tough opening season loss for Norwich. They followed it up with an overtime victory in their second game of the season. And they're coming off a loss against Massachusetts Maritime Academy, a 15-12 game that could have gone either way. It just slipped away. Away from the cadets right at the end. Now, if you guys remember, Mass Maritime, a conference opponent in the LEC of the Beacons, and that's a team that scored 20 goals against the Beacons the last time they played. And so, what we can expect today, probably a lot of offensive fire firepower. This is a Beacons team that has been struggling, to say the least, to get a consistent offensive approach going, but they have been a streaky goal-scoring team, and there are opportunities to get the ball in the net against this Cadets team. That being said, Norwich, very attack-centric, and they have a phenomenal goal scorer. As you guys are looking on your camera, he was all the way to the right, coming in third from the right. That's Coley Bagwell, a phenomenal attack man, can beat you a variety of ways, really similar to the spot on the field that Dara Fahey occupied, number 55, last year for the Beacons, you can expect the same kind of influence out of Coley Bagwell. In the face-off circle for the Cadets is number 31, Thomas Muraski, a junior out of Keller, Texas. He's lined up across from Matt Lucozzi, and it's going to be one for one on the Beacons. We mentioned that they have good numbers in the center face-off circle. They win the first face-off, but then a lackadaisical pass in the direction of Luke Murphy. He drops, and it's picked up going the other way is Anthony Larson for the Cadets. Larson racing down the left sideline, has Luke Murphy on his right shoulder. Nice little shove there from Murphy just to knock him off his block. Larson Dodging around Luke Murphy, and he's tucked back there in the left corner, and Murphy, nice play to just push off, steal the ball away, and here come the Beacons streaking back down the field in transition. Matt Laverty gets body checked, but he gets around Gavin Youngclaws, and here comes Matt Laverty. Quick slide pass, Greg Wolf right in front to Admiran, and what a save in front for the Cadets. That's Luke Boland making his second start of the season, and Gavin Admiran, so many directions he could have gone on that shot. He goes low, and the save is made from Luke Boland. Here's our first look at Charlie Chapman, the junior out of Sandwich, Massachusetts. He's on the field, and that was a nice play in transition from Matt Laverty to open up the goal-scoring opportunity. That's one that Gavin Admiran, he's going to want back, but folks, he's a 13-goal scorer already this season, so he's not going to stop shooting anytime soon. Oh, nice feed from Bowler, and there you go, right there. Gavin Admiran tucks it into the back of the net. That was Liam Bowler, the junior, cutting across the middle, slips the pass over to Gavin Admiran, and for the 14th time this season, Gavin Admiran scores for the Beaks. It's Took just 102 into this contest, and the Beacons are up one to nothing off a Gavin Admiran goal assisted by Liam Bowler. The 14th goal of the season for Gavin Admiran and for Liam Bowler. He has been in the mix offensively. That is his fourth assist on the season. Yet to score a goal, but now four points on the season. And this one out, that is off. Off the cadets, so ball back to the Beacons and racing back down the field. Or pardon me, Colin Ford, he slips over to the near sideline to pick up the ball. 
But here come the Beaks, fresh off the Admiran goal, and now Ford, he's not picked up in the midfield, so he'll get to just kind of meander on into the offensive zone here. Ford, a right-handed cradle. Drops back in the direction of Liam Bowler, just got himself that assist. All the way across the field to Charlie Chapman. Chapman. Quick dodge. Quick shot, and he scores top left corner, and the Beacons, two goals, 29 seconds apart. It's Charlie Chapman. Not quite sure on that assist. It might be an unassisted goal the way he dodged in from the side. We'll cover that momentarily, but Charlie Chapman, a laser shot, his seventh goal of the season, and the Beacons are up 2 to nothing. So Gavin Admiran, Charlie Chapman, the usual suspects for the Beacons, finding Twine early. And this is so nice to see after the slow start against Connecticut College. And that really stuck with the Beacons the rest of the game. They just couldn't shake it off. Six first half goals, zero second half goals. But two very early goals here against the Cadets. And now look at Lucozzi spinning out of some trouble. And he'll run down the left flank with the Beacons up two to nothing. Lucozzi to Murphy. In the middle of the field, not covered is Darian Clay. He's got some room. Clay, the shot, and he scores! Darian Clay finding some room in the middle of the field. And how about this? His first goal as a beacon. The transfer from LaSalle University. It is one minute and 50 seconds into this game. And the Beacons, a 3 to nothing lead. The first career beacon goal for Darian Clay. So three goals, folks, as we hop back in here. Norwich taking their timeout. Can't blame them. We are not even two minutes into this contest, and it's already three goals. Darian Clay, the most recent scorer, as that ball was really room-created from the face-off win by Matt Lucozzi, and so the personnel that was in that central midfield zone, normally Clay is going to come off and let the offensive personnel come onto the field. He was there. He had the open room, and that long stick shot, he was able to tuck it in around Bolin. Beacons leading three to nothing. And so we are back in here with some new personnel on the field. This is a face-off win for Norwich. Trailing three to nothing. Quick shot down low. Cut off the angle was number 20, Tyler Seidel. The junior out of Centerville, Maryland. Cadets new personnel now. They'll bring their offense onto the field. The extra attack man, Alex Johnston now on the right sideline. Lost it for a split second. Slow job to pick it back up. Laverty pestering him. Matt Laverty can't get across that line to pick it up. Finally saved on the play by Mitchell McKay. And now Mitchell McKay on the cradle. Looks in the direction of Johnston. He's just going to stay there and gather the attack for the cadets. Already down to 40 on the shot clock. Here's McKay. He'll whip it all the way back. That's a high pass. Jack Haley reaching up and hauling it back in. Slips it over to McKay. Deep along the right sideline. Now behind the net, McKay slips the pass over to Coley Bagwell. Eight goals on the season for the junior. That's a long pass handled beautifully up top there by Johnston. And now Johnston looks for the left-handed shot. Slips the pass towards Seidel on his knees. Spinning it back out of trouble. Wow, shot attempt and a save is made by Copy. Flag flies, so an opportunity here for the Cadets with a man up. Rip shot goes just wide, but we will blow the whistle, and it will be a man up opportunity for the Norwich University Cadets. Looks to be a one-minute penalty. The guilty party on the play is number 15, Patrick Carey. So it will be a slash against Patrick Carey. That's a one-minute penalty. It's a nice opportunity for the Cadets to get back into this contest here, trailing by three. If you're just tuning in, you missed the first two minutes. You missed three goals. Admirand, Chapman, and Darian Clay in quick succession. Beacons holding the 3-1 lead, and now back around the perimeter offensively go the Cadets. That resets the shot clock, so still 50 to shoot. High up top is Seidel. He reverses field to Johnson. That was Matt Meehan, slips the pass back out. And once again, Johnston having some trouble keeping it in possession. And he takes a shot from the stick. He is down and in pain. And that's a snipe goal from Coley Bagwell right off the Beacons logo in net. And so it is a man-up goal for Bagwell. The Cadets do take advantage of the man-up opportunity. And that makes it a 3-1 to one game. 
That goal scored at the 333 mark of the first period. Coley Bagwell, a snipe, goes low to high for his team leading ninth goal of the season. The next closest cadet, Jack Haley, has five goals. But Coley Bagwell, his ninth of the year, brings the cadets back to within two. It's Beacons three, cadets one. Lovely snipe right there, and it looks like Johnston's going to be okay. McKay coming over to check on him. We'll keep our eyes on that. Those are two crucial midfield players for the cadets. Luke Murphy, he's a crucial midfield player for the Beacons. He's looking for a right-handed shot. Ducks inside, passes it to Smith, and oh, a beautiful read on defense as Jackson Bamfield intercepts that pass, and now he's taking it around. Connor Smith, I think, was just ready and waiting to shoot that one into the net, but a nice play on the back end, Connor Smith. That'll knock this ball Back into the defensive zone. They got a hustle for the clear, and that's a beautiful pass from the goalie Boland ahead to Jackson Bamfield. Bamfield, eyes behind the net, looking towards Seidel. Deep in the corner, flashing high up top is Jack Haley, and Haley has it now with the midfield logo. Alex Johnston with him. Johnston getting met on the play by Carson Mesawar. Mesawar trying to knock Johnston off his block of the left-handed cradle. Can't do it, and behind the net go the cadets. Matt Meehan, right-handed dodge. He's forced out. Nifty pass down low. Johnston looking for the angled shot. Back to Meehan. He's going to walk into it, fake the shot. That was Mitchell McKay wanting it at the top of the slot. It's still in the stick of Seidel. Right-handed dodge. Nice play staying home by Jack Ranta, and that knocks it off his block all the way back to McKay in the deep corner. We're down to 13 on the shot clock now. Luke Murphy pestering Mitchell McKay. McKay with eight to shoot. Seven to shoot. He's far away from the net. Back up top. They don't know that they're down to the last seconds on the shot clock. Meehan's going to let it rip. And a nice low ball, but it is saved by Trevor Coppy in the feigning seconds of the shot clock. And now the Beacons, they need to clear. Cullen looks back to Colburn. This is important here. The Beacons had a lot of trouble. Clearing wasn't the issue against Connecticut College. There were a lot more other problem areas. But there was some trouble against MIT two games ago, getting the ball cleared through the midfield. Nice play by Mesawar to absorb the contact and stick with it. And now it's Luke Murphy plodding along, taking his time here. It was three rapid-fire goals for the Beacons in the first minute 50. Haven't heard much from them in the past three minutes. Mesawar behind the net. Has Chapman crashing on. Mesawar turns. Oh, he tried to get the quick-angled shot in. And that's a nice save there from Boland in close quarters. A transition pass, read beautifully by Chapman. Ball is still loose on the ground. Charlie kicks at it. He's going to pick it up with a head full of steam. He got it around Aaron Broom, but then he ran into two players and a huge hit in the middle of the field delivered by Sean Culla. That hit is legal. Ball out off the cadets. And so the Beacons now, Greg Wolf with the ball in his stick on the angle on the attack here. Beacons three, cadets one. Chapman, he has one of the three Beacons goals on the right-handed cradle. Dodge step, he's got room. Dives in, low shot, it's tipped by Boland. Chapman the closest to it. And we will get a shot clock reset back to 60. Chapman and Admiran next to each other. Charlie's going to pick it up on the ball. Chapman, long pass to Wolf. Here's Greg Wolf. He's a left-handed shot, has the lefty cradle. Eyes up. Thought about that long shot. He'll spin it back around here as the Beacons still with 49 on the shot clock. And Mesawar. Seeing a lot of playing time, and this is true freshman season, the two-sport athlete. Long cross-field pass to Chapman. Chap had to take his time picking it up, and now we're down to 35 on the shot clock. Fronted by the long stick here of number 15, Cyrus Goulet. Chapman, maybe waiting for a pick from Greg Wolf. Let's see if he gets it. He will. He'll dodge right. Slip a pass over to Greg Wolf. 19 on the shot clock. Greg, the big attack man out of Kingston, Mass. Oh, beautiful pass and a quick minute goal for Gavin Admiran. That's a beautiful assist from Greg Wolf and the Beacons back up three. It's four to one Beacons. That goal coming at the 7.03 mark of the first quarter. For Gavin Admiran, his second of the day, his 15th of the season, and a nifty assist out of Greg Wolf. His first assist to go along with one goal on the season. Beacons back up 4-1. to one. That was nice to see. You had, you, if you remember, Gavin Adveran missed an opportunity in the very opening of the game to score a close quarter goal like that. He tried to go low and it was, the save was made by Bolin. He goes low again and this time gets it snuck past Bolin. 15 goals already now in just 
1.2 games so far for Admiran. Look at Murphy dancing in, and he doesn't shoot. It'll pull the pass back to Admiran. Gavin has Zach Mann cutting in. Mann looking for a man at the top of the formation. It's Bowler. Bowler. Cutting in, Bowler has a right-handed shot there. Instead, floats the pass to Admiran. Beacon's really threatening here. Shot goes out to Murphy. He lets it rip, and it's saved by Bolin to flex off his stick off to the right side of the net. Still 45 to shoot for the Beaks. And once again, Gavin Admiran wasting no time. Now he will peel off to the right before he starts his dodge in. Long pass up to Murphy. 40 to shoot for the Beaks. Here's Luke on the right-handed cradle. Angling off to his right. Nothing there. He'll flip it back to Wolf. Wolf to Zach Mann, seeing his first minutes in this game today. Nothing there for Mann, and so the Beacons showing some good patience here, but they're down to 20 on the shot clock. Murphy spins, has the right-handed cradle alive. Beautiful pass to Smith, but the save is made from Bolin. Beautiful play there from number 23, Luke Bolin, the sophomore out of Toland, Connecticut. Connor Smith had to assume he was staring down his first goal of the contest, and that's a stick save from number 23. So the cadets get the stop when they desperately need it. And now it's Anthony Larson charging ahead down the left sideline. Deep in the corner, that's number 20, Tyler Seidel. He'll circle it back around as we have personnel changes from both sides here. Man coming off, Ford coming on. Seidel with the right-handed dodge goes back across field and that pass is low and it's a turnover for the cadets. You don't want to see that if you're a Norwich fan. It's, that looked to be Jack Haley with some room to operate. And the pass... A little lackadaisical, a little low and out of Jack Haley's reach, and it's a turnover for the Cadets, their third of this first quarter. Ford on the clear attempt for the Beaks, goes right around the right sideline, and he's got some room to work. Fakes the pass back to Beauregard, and now he puts on the brakes, and the Beacons will reset their offensive approach. Nolan Beauregard, a strong showing in his first four collegiate games. He has three assists, three goals and two assists. He was vying for his fourth career goal right there. That shot misses wide. Admiran the closest to it. Kind of nice to see Gavin Admiran solely playing from behind the X right now. There was uh, some times in earlier games this season where with the changing of the personnel, shot saved by Boland on a tough angle there. Uh, some times earlier this season where with the new personnel, they were trying to find a spot for Gavin, maybe kind of playing him as like an attacking midfielder. He's back in his true spot where he's comfortable at, dodging from the X. And it's already, you know, two goals already this afternoon. It seems to be the right move. He can score goals from anywhere, but if you have a goal scorer of Gavin Admiran's capacity, you want him on the field where he's feeling most comfortable. Beacons four, Cadets one. Field reversed here. Cyrus Goulet on the offensive attack. He hands the pass off to Alex Johnston. Johnston sets a pick for Coley Bagwell, and he goes, Bagwell goes right back to Johnston. Behind the net they go. Here's Meehan, fronted by Culler. He gets around him off a nice dodge step. McKay wants it, but he's too far from the net to make a shot. So here's Jack Haley. Five goals on the season. Rips that one, misses well high. It does look like, I believe that was number 20, Tyler Seidel. He was closest to it. Johnston's back on it for the cadets. I just turned around. It's a lovely full crowd behind us here at Cotter Field on just a beautiful Friday afternoon. Some high-quality lacrosse here in this first quarter and some great defensive play from Darian Clay. His strong afternoon continues. He just scored his first Beacons career goal earlier in the first quarter, and that's a beautiful forced turnover. Four of them for the Beaks. Four turnovers for forced against the Cadets in this first quarter. But it is Cadets ball after that Beacons turnover, so... Nice broadcaster jinx from me. And here is Bagwell, deep behind the net for the Cadets. Four and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. Beacons leading four to one. Bagwell over to Matthew Hannon. And now we'll get another look at Chris Smith, the junior attacker out of Dawsonville, Georgia. This is Liam Connolly. Looks behind the net for Bagwell. Coley Bagwell to a cutting Chris Smith. He keeps the shot and goes behind the back and almost gets that one through. It's deflected on the play and picked up by Colin Ford. And here goes Ford around all comers. He has Laverty off to his right. Ford's going to keep walking it in. Beacons leading 4-1 to one and a great check on the play. It'll be a slash. I thought it was clean, but that will be a slash against the Cadets or, or some form of penalty against Norwich. And so the Beacons now with their first man up opportunity. It will go against Matthew Hannon, the junior out of Milford, New Hampshire. He's in the box. Now, Norwich, they have had one man-up opportunity. The lone goal that they have scored came from that man-up opportunity. And so now the Beaks, 
their first opportunity with a man up, wanting to stretch this lead from three to four. Let's see their angle of attack here. All is good. Referee winds us in. It's Murphy over to Bowler. Bowler has an assist this afternoon. Back to Chapman. Chapman, quick pass to Murphy. Over to Smith. It bounces. Connor's on it. Smith fakes the shot. Goes to Admiran down low. And the pass is red. Not picked off, though. Chapman picks it back up. Over to Smith. Smith. Oh, it's deflected right in front of the net. That was a great play defensively by Joshua McQuinn, the big six foot one junior out of Milton, Vermont. He got a stick on it. Only eight seconds left on this penalty. Chapman from outside misses wide to the left. Admiran's going to get it, but just four seconds left here with a man in the box. Four seconds left on the hand and penalty, and it's going to be Broom coming on for him. So 0 for 1 on the man-up opportunity for the Beaks, but they're still in a dangerous spot here. Shot score! Down low in front of the net. That's number 41, Greg Wolf, his second goal of the season. And his second point today as Greg Wolf scores underneath at the 11.42 mark. He has two points today, now a goal to go along with his assist. For the second time this year, it's Greg Wolf finding Twine, and the Beacons lead 5-1. Nice game out of big number 41. If you guys remember last season, he got off to such a hot start and saw his role kind of reduce gradually over the season. Still a big goal scorer, got up to 40 goals in the season, but now a marked man, if you will, a target on the attack for the Beacons, and he's showing what that big frame and left-handed shot combined can deliver onto the field. So it's an even strength goal for the Beacons, but now they're back up four, thanks to Greg Wolf. Long shot, save made by Copy. Ball loose in front of him, but it's going to be scooped up cleanly by Justin McCullough. McCullough coming off. Culla taking his place. So we have a Culla for McCullough swap, and Culla launches it long over to Patrick Colbrin. Colburn deep down the right sideline. There's going to be a penalty against the cadets here. So Caesar Hendricks, he's going to be able to take his time if he wants. A lot of different directions the Beacons can go. Bagwell's going to be the guilty party. Carey flashes open here. He wants to rip that shot. Instead, it's going to be Wolf again, and he scores again. Greg Wolf, quick mitts. Never mind that delayed penalty because Wolf slots it in high to the right side of the net. His third point today, his third goal of the season, his second goal today, and now the Beacons are up 6-1 to one, thanks to the Greg Wolf goal at the 12:28 mark in the first period. So that penalty will stand against Coley. Yeah. So my apologies on that. That penalty will stand. This is a huge opportunity for the Beaks. 0 of 1 on the man up differential today. But Bagwell, the team's leading scorer, he's in the sin bin. This will be a one-minute penalty. So we take a look behind us. It is standing room only capacity here at Cotter Field this afternoon. And you got to think, fans of Beacons, happy what they are seeing out on the AstroTurf today. We're down to two and a half minutes left in this first quarter. That's a big face-off win for the Cadets as they're trying to hold off this one-minute man-down situation. Meehan running into some trouble there. He's able to get around Sean Culla, and now he'll take it deep into that corner and just let the clock bleed. Looks like we still have about 40 minutes left on this penalty as Culla almost dispossessing Meehan, but Meehan is able to corral it in the corner, and he's got some room here. So 25 seconds left on this man uh, down situation for Norwich, and they're doing a great job just keeping the ball away from the Beacons until that right there. Carey with a stick check. Stick is dropped on the play by Chris Smith, but it's picked up at the last second by Alex Johnston. Right place, right time for big number 32. You hear the clock running down here. Bagwell's about to come on in the next five seconds. Johnston. Nice job from Norwich. They never let the Beacons have the ball with the man up. And now Johnston has a man. Smith cutting in in the pass. Just not corralled cleanly. Ball back to the Beacons. Carey. Right around the warding defender. And he has Ranta to his left. Carey over to Ranta. And he goes over his head. 
Oh, the Beacons had something there, and it just wasn't the crispest of passes from Patrick Carey to Jack Ranta. Now, in both of their defense, that's not what either of those two were on the field to do. But a bad turnover for the Beacons, their third, as we approach the one-minute mark here in the first quarter. A chance to go up from six to seven by the wayside. But another turnover here, the fifth committed of the quarter by Norwich as Haley just threw that one away. And so we are at the 103 mark right now. Gotta think the Beacons are gonna put on the brakes here and hold this last possession to try and get out of quarter one with maybe a seven to one lead. Laverty charging off to his right, has Culla, slips the pass to him. And so now Culla joining the attack, Mick Flynn, from Bellingham, Mass, he has the ball right now. Around to Admiran, down low to Smith and the big save from Boland as Smith tries to go low through the five hole. Boland was ready. 35 seconds on a running clock and it's cadets number nine, Anthony Larson into the attack for Norwich. Passing it deep behind the net here, Seidel. Great angling defense by Colburn, nowhere to go for Tyler Seidel and he has to go all the way back to Matt Hannon. Hannon just got whistled for a big penalty to let the Beacons go up 5-1. to one. Then another goal right after that. Put the Beaks up 6-1. to one. Hannon getting fronted on the play by Caesar Hendricks. Nice defense out of the true freshman, but Hannon's able to knock off the defensive rush. Nifty hands there down low from Liam Connolly, but the period expires before Connolly can get a shot off. It was a fun period. Some scoring runs for the Beaks. Three goals in the first two minutes and they take a 6-1 to one lead into the first quarter. Intermission 15 minutes down. 45 to go and a good start for the Beaks. It's UMass Boston 6 Norwich 1. More after this on the Beacon Broadcasting Network brought to you by LittleEast.tv We're back here at Cotter Field. Beacons leading 6-1 to one after a great first 15 minutes of lacrosse here. The Beacons 1-3 through their first four games trying to get win number two secured and in the bag. For Norwich, a big win two games ago and then a tough loss against Mass Maritime. Not the best start for them. Plenty of firepower on this cadet's offense, so the Beacons have to stand on guard. Two goals for Gavin Admirand. Two goals for Greg Wolf, and then a goal apiece for Charlie Chapman and Darian Clay. And the Beacons leading 6-1. to one. The lone goal scored by the usual suspect for Norwich, Coley Bagwell, his ninth of the season. That goal was scored with a man up. All six Beacons goals scored at even strength. It's Matt Lucozzi in the center circle, lined up across from Thomas Moraski. Lucozzi won this matchup two of three times in the first quarter. Moraski digging in, but it's Lucozzi winning the faceoff, and now a right-handed cradle trying to free some space, but the Beacons will start quarter number two with the ball until that. Right there, great play by Seidel poking it free. Seidel probing around. Has some room for the right-handed shot, but he gets cut off his block by Patrick Carey. A great job on the backside of that play, not losing Seidel and knocking the cadets off of that little advantage they have there. They have to go all the way back and drop the ball off to Mitchell McKay at the midfield. Whistle on the play, and it's going to be a ward call against the cadets, and so Laverty doesn't miss the invitation to take it right back into the attack zone. Laverty, thinking about the shot, Spins back around, has Beauregard to his right, instead slips it off to Gavin. Here's Admiran, far away from the net, looking in the direction of Nolan Beauregard. Beauregard, three goals, pardon me, two goals, three assists, and this is freshman season. 
Charlie Chapman plotting on in. He'll join the attack. Maybe setting the pick here for Murphy. Murphy from deep in the offensive zone. Cross field pass. Chapman low to high and he scores. A missile. Charlie Chapman. He has one of the hardest shots in the conference. And he goes low to high. We normally see him go high to low. He goes low to high. Tucks it underneath the crossbar. His second goal. Three different beacons now with two goals apiece. And for the second time today and the eighth time this season, it's Charlie Chapman finding Twine. And the beacons take their largest lead of the afternoon. They're up six. It's seven to one. Really nice to see here that you had both Admiran and Chapman hop right into this contest with eyes on the net. Two long shots from outside for Charlie, both finding Twine. His second today and his eighth on the season. Ford, oh, he had Wolf right in the middle of the field. That was another big opportunity for the Beacons in front of the net. Instead, Wolf not able to corral the pass. And back up down the left sideline, Clayton Caesar back to his goalie, goalie pardon me, Bowley the goalie, Luke Boland. I'm sure he's gotten that nickname a couple of times. Gavin Youngclaws, his brother, one of, the, one of the three goalies on the roster for the Beacons. He passes it into Coley Bagwell, Tyler Seidel. Seidel, oh, ducks underneath and he misses the shot. He had the angle, but he just missed it across the face of the net. Trevor Coppy was able to get to that near post. Might have just... Change the angle of attack there for Seidel. Here's Bagwell. He's, he's taken one shot today and he scored off it. But aside from that, haven't heard much out of the nine-goal scorer out of York, Pennsylvania. And he's met deep in the corner there by Patrick Carey. That ball's still loose deep in the corner. Great effort out of Carey. Bagwell lost it again. And it's picked up by Pat Carey. The shot clock resets. The ball is loose. Cullum picks it up and the Beacons are going to hopefully get this clear. Ford to the right of Cullum. He slips open, and here comes Colin Ford, right down the middle of the field. Slips the pass over to Smith. Smith fakes the shot, and now the Beacons will reset their personnel here as Smith looks back in the direction of Mesawar. Carson Mesawar, chop step, spinning. He wants to get a shot off, but he has Sullivan open. Shot score, and you can give that goal all to Carson Mesawar on the assist. Timothy Sullivan slots it in the back of the net, and the Beacons offense came to play here at Cotter Field. For the first time today, and the fifth time this season, it's Timothy Sullivan scoring for the Beaks off of the Mesawar assist. So for Timothy Sullivan, his fifth of the season. He's just a sophomore, and this is a player who transferred from right down the street at Curry College. A very nice second-line midfielder who has a nose for the goal. Just scored his fifth goal there, and that was because he showed up at the right place at the right time off of the dodge from Carson Mesawar. That ball's still down at the feet, and it's scooped up by Murphy. Another face-off win for Lucozzi. He's dominating in the circle. Murphy shot it, misses high, but Admiran's closest to it. And the Beacons once again, a chance to stretch this league out. They've scored the last five goals in this contest. Coley Bagwell made it a 3-1 game, but it's been five unanswered goals since for the Beaks. Admiran fakes the shot, wants to go low, bounces it, and that was a little too cute there from Admiran. The soft bounce was read beautifully by Luke Boland. He makes the easy save, and he slips the pass ahead to Jackson Bamfield. Bamfield, I, I don't think he ever really had that, and then that pass intended for Broom is turned over. Murphy picks it up. Running down the field, and oh, Greg Wolf was on the doorstep, and that pass from Justin McCullough just out of his reach. Ball back to the cadets here. Fresh 80 on the shot clock, 11.43 left in this second quarter. So three beacons with two goals apiece, Gavin Admirand, Charlie Chapman, Greg Wolf, and then Timothy Sullivan and Darian Clay, each with a goal. Want to see that tally just keep running up here as it's... An uncharacteristic start across the first four games, to say the least, for the Beacons. But you've got to think, a game like this, putting some wind back in there. Sales is Smith! That's just a pretty goal. He's showing off at that point. He fakes the shot high, takes the stick low, and pockets it in on the low to high shot for the first time today and the tenth time this season. Connor Smith finding Twine and the Beacons up 10-1 to here in the second quarter.
fault. So correction, it's the score is nine to one. We got that one right. The goal just scored by Connor Smith, his tenth of the season. And so now you have all of your usual uh, suspects checked off in the goal scoring department. Gavin Adberant has two, Smith with one, Charlie Chapman with two, Sullivan with one, Greg Wolf with two. Basically, I think Luke Murphy is the only player we're waiting on for from a goal, but he has two assists today as well. He just got that assist on the Connor Smith goal. So it's Murph again. Let's see what else he can generate here. He gets past the defense, goes on the quick pass down low to Wolf. He can't corral it, but he gets to it first. Great second effort on the backside of that play from Mason McMahon. McMahon knocks the ball free. He still has it deep down the right sideline, gets it back to Boland. And the Cadets, a nice job there clearing the pressure. They haven't cleared the zone yet. There it is, a successful clear for the Cadets. And now Anthony Larson. Hasn't taken any shots yet today. He's done a great job bringing the ball into the attack zone from the midfield. He slips the pass over to Jack Haley. Haley behind the net. Plenty of time on the shot clock here for the cadets as they bring on both Johnston and Mitchell McKay. Haley to Bagwell, and it's deflected in front. It's just intercepted by Hendricks. How about Caesar Hendricks picking it off and racing down the right sideline? He's got so much room. What's he going to do? Hendricks, eyes to his left, passes it back. Ripping in his carry, slips it back to Hendricks. Hendricks, eyes up towards the goal. Dancing, he'll go back to carry. Carry resets. So a nice job there for Hendricks to get it into the zone. It doesn't lead to any shot directly, but plenty of time now on the shot clock for the Beaks. M Mick Flynn, jab step, passes behind the net to Admirand. A lot of room for Gavin. Here's Hendricks, head fake, Caesar Hendricks, low shot, and he scores five hole. I believe that is the second collegiate goal for the true freshman out of Mashpee, Massachusetts, Caesar Hendricks, making it 10 to 1 Beacons. They do hit double digits. It is seven unanswered goal for the Beaks. That goal coming at the 5:13 mark of the second quarter. Hendricks, basically, he started that possession himself. He gets it in some room. He's so nifty on his feet with the ball, and he created space for himself. A beautiful low shot beats Boland five hole, and the Beacons take a 10 to one lead. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the UMass Boston Beacons lacrosse team that everybody expected to see coming into 2023. Infraction on the face off, so it's Aaron Broom on the ball for the Cadets. Seven unanswered goal for the Beacons here. Aaron Broom, a junior out of Rye, New Hampshire. Swings the pass over to Coley Bagwell. Bagwell. Head full of steam, wrapping behind the net. Pass, oh, he had Meehan at a dangerous spot on the right doorstep, but that pass goes all the way back to the sideline. Meehan fronted by Evan Twombly back there in the corner. He gets it back to McKay, but now 45 to shoot, and McKay nowhere near the net. Looks back over to Alex Johnston. Johnston pushed away from the net by Laverty. Great defense by Laverty. And he knocked him out of bounds. What a play by the true freshman, Matt Laverty. Really coming into his own in just his fifth collegiate game. Normally, he's playing defensive short stick midi. That was just a true defensive play right there. Loses the ball momentarily. He scoops it back up. He's got plenty of time here. He has Charlie Chapman to his right. Going to slide the pass over to Charlie Chapman, but as he comes off, he's going to get a nice little word of encouragement here from his Beacon sideline. Great play out of the true freshman, Matt Laverty. And the Beacons now have a chance to take a double-digit lead here as Chapman, wrapping all the way around the net, passes it wide to Mesawar, back up top to Nolan Beauregard. Nolan, chop step, right-handed cradle, right-handed shot, and a big save there from Boland. He saw it all the way. He picks it up on the low shot. Chapman reaches up for the interception, but it's... Hauled in by Jackson Bamfield. Bamfield all the way in. Bamfield save made by Trevor Coppy. Mesawar picks it up, and now the Beacons have Norwich caught out of position in transition. What are they going to do? Beauregard, he's fine. Late personnel coming on for the Cadets. The Beacons are uh, have a man-up opportunity. That pass goes high, but it goes right to Admirant. So we'll wait and see with the flag on the field. Deep behind the net. Smith, high shot, and he misses high, but that will put a quick stop to the play as we figure out the penalty called on the field. Penalty is going to go against Meehan. It's a one-minute penalty against the junior out of Norfolk, Mass., Matthew Meehan. 
And here we go. The Beacons, just their second man up opportunity of the contest. They are 0 for 1 in the man up situations. Norwich's lone goal this afternoon was scored with a man up. So that really the one thing you can point to that the cadets have handled business better than than the Beacons this afternoon. Here's Admiran. Back to Liam Bowler. Bowler assisted the first goal of the afternoon to Gavin Admiran. He's been busy today. Murphy. Behind the net to Admiran. Gavin. Back to Connor Smith. Over to Luke Murphy. Long shot coming from Bowler, low to high, and he skips it in. And the man up goal for Liam Bowler, lovely to see. He's been really developing this season, and he scores his first goal of the year, his fourth point of the year. It is a Liam Bowler snipe with a man up to extend the lead to 10. Beacons 11, Cadets 1. Quick metal math here, that goal was scored at the 7.42 mark. Bowler, his first of the year with a man up, Everything going right for the Beacons right now. Still plenty of time left in this lacrosse game, though. So if you're the Beacons, you can't rest on your laurels at all. And if you're the Cadets, you know there are goals to be had in this contest. Nifty play there by McNeeny. He almost was able to bat it back towards Darian Clay, but instead it will be... No, it's still loose. I thought that that was picked up by Cyrus Goulet. Instead, it's 15 for the Beaks. Pat Carey with the ball. He spins, looking for the clear. This has got to feel good here as this ball back to Sean Culla. The Beaks, they don't get the face off, but then a great defensive play by Pat Carey gives them the ball back. And they are on the heels of eight unanswered goals right now. That 11th goal was the first goal scored with a man up, so it's been great even strength lacrosse. Chapman spinning, Chapman shooting, and that one's off the shin all the way out of play behind the end zone. I believe that was number 29, Mason McMahon, who took that one. And he's, you can see, jogging with a little bit of a limp there. That shin's going to feel that one. And we've had colder days of lacrosse, but that's no fun. That's a hard Charlie Chapman shot that he was able to get a block. So we'll remember that one, McMahon putting his body on the line. Now Meehan, his penalty led to the most recent Beacons goal. So redemption on the mind of Matt Meehan, the junior out of Norfolk. He dodges in around Ford, goes for the left-handed shot, saved by Copy in front of the net. The penalty flags will come out, but that was a great job. Standing firm by Trevor Copy with me and bearing in on him with a head full of steam. It will be a Beacons penalty. We'll hold real quick. So it's going to go against... It's going to be a Tech 30 foul against Colin Ford on the push. Just 30 seconds with a man up here for the Cadets. They're one of two with a man up this afternoon. Let's see if the Beacons can lock all windows and doors here. I believe we are looking at Tyler Seidel with us, uh, in front of us with the ball, or it might be me and behind the net on the left side, so not quite sure who's going to start this play. Shot clock gets reset to 60, and it will be me and deep in the left corner starting with the ball. So a 30-second man-up opportunity for the Cadets. They have let the Beacons score the last eight straight goals in this contest. Want to put a stop to that here. Seidel over to McKay. This is Bagwell. He has scored a goal today. Aside from that, haven't heard much from him. Far from the net is Coley Bagwell as he's pestered by Patrick Carey. The Beacons doing what they do, employing Carey to just kind of cover up on the team's best attacker. Look at Sean Culler coming in and just whacking away at Mitchell McKay. That will put an end to this man-up opportunity. Colin Ford is released. He's back onto the field. He fronts Coley Bagwell. And so nothing there in the man-up opportunity for Norwich. Bagwell, good shot, and he beats Copy. Bottom right-hand corner. And, uh, yeah, not quite sure what happened there between Ranta and Bagwell after the play. I think I think Ranta didn't know the play was over, and then Bagwell was was trying to say, hey, like, it's all good. And you see Ranta go and make one more, uh, like, push attempt. I don't think that's going to lead to any sort of flag or anything, but it might be some ill will between Ranta and Bagwell moving forward. Anyway, business at hand here. That is the 10th goal of the season, and the second today scored by Coley Bagwell. He scores it at the 9.34 mark. It is the second goal of the day for the Cadets, and it brings them back to the 9. It's 11-2. So it's McNeeny back in the faceoff circle. Both McNeeny and Lucozzi have had phenomenal days, and they're going to win another one as that one's played back to Luke Murphy. Murphy fakes the pass. 
Dodges in. Has McNeeny. McNeeny over. Long shot and a score for Ranta. And Jack Ranta, he definitely remembered whatever Coley Bagwell said to him because those are two long sticks hooking up. It's McNeeny on the assist. When does he ever get those? And Ranta sliding it into the back of the net. That's an awesome goal for Ranta. His second point of the year. His first goal of the season. And for Jason McNeeny, his first point of the year with the assist. Beacons back up double digits. We still have five minutes left to go in the second quarter. That goal scored by Jack Ranta at the 9.49 mark, just 15 seconds after the prior goal. What an afternoon we are having here at Cotter Field for the Beaks. Ranta from McNeeny, and the Beacons are back up 12-2. They get it right back, 15 seconds after the Bagwell goal. But now Bagwell into the crease. So they, they could have been a penalty against Bagwell for contact against Copy. They do call him in the crease, and now Murphy, no time wasted. 4.45 on a running clock here. Smith, quick pass to Admirand. It goes low. Wolf tracking it down. He can't get to it in time. And that was a pass attempt, so it'll go back the other way. Fourth turnover of the first half here for the Beacons. They've looked good. Almost great. Not quite great. Five turnovers, a bit too many here in this first half. Here's Broom. All the way back to Bagwell in the deep corner. He wanted to go with a cross field pass in the direction of Smith. He gets it to him. Chris Smith fronted by Sean Culla. Over to Tyler Seidel. To Mitchell McKay. The big attack. Goes cradles both ways. Flips the right-handed pass over. Matthew Hannon asking for the pick. Has Seidel, Seidel spinning around Colburn. That's a nice move, but he loses it in the middle of the field. That will be a penalty against the Beaks. Ball still loose. It's picked up on the play by Sean Culla, and the whistle blows. Great individual effort there by Tyler Seidel drawing this penalty against the Beaks. We'll see the official ruling momentarily. The Beacons were able to hold off a 30-second penalty with relative ease on the last man-up opportunity for Norwich. Let's see the call here. Oh, so that's not good for the Beacons. Both Patricks on the defensive end, each getting technical push, 30-second fouls. It's the two big defenders, Colbrun and Carey. So a two-man-up opportunity here for the Cadets. What do the Beacons have in them? They were able to uh, defend the Ford penalty pretty well. But now these are your two primary central defenders, both in the sin bin. 30 seconds. If you're Norwich, you got to take advantage here. It's Haley to Bagwell. They'll go behind the net to the X. Meehan having some trouble corralling it. He gets it back. Matt Meehan. Back to McKay. McKay has Bagwell off to his right. He thought about the long shot. Goes back in the direction of Har Haley. And a save is made there by Trevor Coppy. Jack Haley thought he had a goal. The pass up ahead to Evan Twombly. Still loose here. Ball still loose there as we had a release coming out on my apologies. And there's a whistle here on the field. There's a lot happening right now after that. So there's going to be a penalty at the middle of the field, we assume, and then maybe something against the Beacons bench. Everybody getting sent back to their benches here so the referees can dictate the play. Okay, so all that will just lead to a reset and play. Both teams get their fresh personnel on. And it is Cadets ball after that. So that's the call on the field. It was an inadvertent whistle. Should have been a Cadets ball. That's what the referee came over and explained to us. My apologies, folks. Couldn't stick with that one for you here. So the Cadets down 10. They're not able to get the goal in that man-up opportunity. Look at that defense from Luke Murphy just knocking the ball out of the hands of Aaron Broom. Possession back to the Beaks. Murphy on the 44-yard line as we're back into play. And he throws the shoulder in, and that's going to be a foul. Luke Murphy must have been feeling himself a little bit there on the collision between him and Aaron Broom. It happened right in front of the referee, and so a statement being made here just to try and keep this game in control. I'm getting the official word here from the referee. 
It's a full time. It's a two minute illegal body check. It happened right in front of the referee. And so if you're Luke Murphy, you're obviously feeling good at the way this game is progressing right now. You just were able to get the ball off of Aaron Broom for a hit like that. So obviously that's where your head still is. And lacking discipline. You know, you don't see it too often. Luke Murphy, he's, he's the stalwart player. You can always count on him there. Not probably going to affect the run of play here in this first half, but definitely a play to remember. And it's going to be a coaching moment here as we have 3.07 left in the second quarter. And it's going to be two minutes of an unreleasable man-up differential for Norwich with your All-American in the penalty box. So let's see who steps up to the challenge for the Beaks on defense. Carey and Colbert have been released from the sin bin. Right now, it looks like Ranta, Carey, Twombly, Laverty, and Sean Culla in the defensive zone here for the Beaks. So 1.07 is going to be the time that Luke Murphy can get released from the sin bin. It's going to be a long two minutes until then. Meehan thought about the shot. That pass is tipped by Laverty. It gets down low to Seidel, and it will free up Meehan for a pass up top. In the direction of McKay, it goes right past him. So a great first 20 seconds on the penalty kill, on the man down for the Beaks. They'll get the ball back, and now, if you guys remember, Norwich had a situation where they were playing with a man down, and they bled the clock for a whole minute without the Beacons touching the ball. Let's see if the Beacons can flip that and do the same thing against the Cadets. They have another minute 35 without Luke Murphy. Sean Culla, a nifty little dangle there to get around the defender. And now Patrick Carey looks back to Nolan Beauregard. You can tell the Beacons are playing with a man down right now, but Chapman's going to come on. He has a man down goal this season. Beauregard thought about dodging in. Now he's going to wrap it in for a low shot. Can't get the shot off. It's blocked on the play. Wolf's going to be closest to it. And so now, 107 left on the penalty against Luke Murphy, but the Beacons, they look intent to try and score here. Wolf back to Chapman. Chapman, chop step. Chapman shot misses just wide. He tried to go outside to high, and he just misses the top left corner. So one minute down, one minute left. Beacons looking no worse for the wear in this unreleasable penalty against Luke Murphy, still holding this 12-2 lead. Smith, double teamed deep in the corner, confident with the ball, and I believe that's going to be a timeout. Yes, timeout called by the Beacons as Smith almost danced himself into some trouble there. Instead, timeout called and the Beacons can reset. They still have to kill off 54 seconds of this man down situation, but looking good. We'll take a very quick break with the Beacons leading by 10. Two minutes remaining, Beacons 12, Cadets 2. Beacons with the ball, with a man down. Luke Murphy still has 54 seconds of his unreleasable two-minute penalty, but the Beacons looking good in his absence. Just trying to milk off the clock here, maybe get one more goal before halftime. They're already holding a double-digit lead, and Charlie Chapman back deep in the left corner waiting for the referee's whistle to get us back underway. All right, Chap, he chops his feet. He's down the right sideline. He'll take it back into the middle of the field. This is all in an attempt to maybe wind up some time, but Chapman had a wide open shot open up for himself and a nice save there by Bolin. He's able to reach across the face of the net and make the stick save. Mason McMahon, nice game for him, the long stick midfielder and defender. Dancing in, 
Can't get the shot off. And a nice play by Pat Carey to dispossess him and pick up the ball in the loose field. Carey. It's 25 seconds left on Murphy's penalty. Carey chops in. Looks back to Bowler, and Bowler was offsides. Too many men across, and that was a big opportunity to kill off this man up, or this man down situation. Instead, 20 more seconds with a man up for the cadets. Bagwell, left-handed cradle, chops to his right. He gets around Bowler, left-handed shot, saved by Copy. He's on his back, and he makes the save. He keeps it covered, and now he looks ahead to Darian Clay. Clay. Murphy's on the field. Clay looks over in the direction of Wolf. Pass is tipped. Smith can't get to it in time. Ooh, Beacons had an opportunity right there. Smith is able to pick up the loose ball after Wolf knocks it free. He fakes the pass towards the middle. Smith cruising in. Out to Bowler. Back up top to Caesar Hendricks. 50 in the quarter. Bowler to Hendricks. Little two man game here. Pretty far away from the net. Hendricks spins. Hendricks, cross field pass to Smith, low shot and he scores! What an assist from Caesar Hendricks, what a shot from Connor Smith. And for the second time today, and the 11th time this season, Connor Smith finds Twine. The Beacons have their largest lead of the afternoon up 11, it's 13-2. That goal coming at the 14-18 mark of the second quarter. Connor Smith from Caesar Hendricks. How do you do? Another multi-goal scorer now as Smith has his second of the day and his 11th of the season. Now four different beacons with two goals in this contest. Admiran, Chapman, Wolf, and Connor Smith. Beacons back on the ball. It's Carson Mesawar. Chop, step, passes wide open. Was Wolf in the middle of the zone. He can't pick it up. But it's loose, and Admiran forces it free. Boland gets back into the net. 20 seconds left here in the half. Can the Beacons get one more across? Sullivan's going to join the attack. Admirant back to Mesawar. To a cutting Smith, and that shot misses just wide to the left. That was a very difficult angle for the hands. And let's see, the Beacons call the timeout right before that ball was going to go back into play. We might have 5.6 on the clock. It might be slightly more. We'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere because there's going to be about six seconds left for the Beacons to try and score one more goal. They're leading 13-2. to two. All right, so welcome back here. We're live on the Beacon Broadcasting Network, brought to you by LittleEast.tv. The Beacons with the ball, just calling the timeout. It Clock reset from 5.6 up to 7. So there's going to be 7 seconds to try and get one more shot off here. Six first quarter goals, seven second quarter goals, a 13-2 lead right now. How good must that feel for this Beacons team? Let's see what Connor Smith has in mind. Clock gets wound. We are back underway. Smith, that pass is deflected, and it's chipped up, and McMahon's going to carry it out of trouble, and that will do it. <laughs> for half number one 13 goals for the beacons they tie their second largest score in a game of the season they do it in one half four different goal scorers with two goals and an 11 goal lead as we head to the locker room we'll take a quick break here when we come back we will have the halftime numbers and goal scorers for you fun first half finds the beacons up 11 at halftime it's umass boston 13 norwich university 2 we'll be right back here on the beacon broadcasting network brought to you by littleeast.tv
Welcome back to James Cotter Field. The Beacons enjoying their best half of the 2023 season, leading Norwich University 13-2 at the break. You're going to love taking a look at these stats here, and we'll get into it side by side. The Beacons outscoring the Cadets 13-2 out shooting the cadets 31 to 13 and you could feel it the beacons were living in their offensive zone this first half eight saves made by trevor copy he was busy just two balls getting past him that's a great clip for the junior out of attleboro nine saves made for luke boland but he was touched 13 times by the beacons offense the beacons Hardly winning the ground ball battle. We talked about that was the stat to watch coming into action today. They uh, Seven more ground balls corralled for the Beaks, and they dominated as expected in the face-off circle, winning 12 of the 17 draws this afternoon. A lot of goals to cover, so we'll just do it this way. For the Beacons, they scored 13 goals in the first half, four different Beacons with two goals apiece. Connor Smith, two goals and an assist. Charlie Chapman, two goals and an assist. Gavin Admiran, two goals and an assist. And Greg Wolf, welcome to the party, two goals and two assists. And then a goal and an assist for Cesar Hendricks. Luke Murphy with a goal and an assist. Liam Bowler, a goal and an assist. And then a goal for Jack Ranta and a goal for Timothy Sullivan. A fun first half, 13 goals scored by the Beaks. Really quickly, we are going to take a sneak peek at the Beaks as we head into this spring break weekend. Baseball in Florida taking on Benedictine at two. They're down in Auburndale, Florida for that spring break tournament. Softball also in Florida, and they have two games tomorrow in 11 a.m. first pitch against the University of Scranton, and then they'll play again at six, or pardon me, at one right after that game against Wilson College. A late, late game against Willie Patterson, Willie P, as a... Philadelphians know that's what we call that school. They're down in Florida playing the baseball team, and that game starts at 6 as well. Then Sunday, more action on the diamond. The softball team, two games against USJ and Spalding at 11 and 3, respectively. And the Beacons, their final game in Florida, Sunday night against SUNY Brockport. And so we have about five minutes before we get started for half number two. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, it will be time for half number two. Let's see how much further the Beacons can expand this lead. It's 13 to 2. We'll be right back with more on the Beacon Broadcasting Network.
We're having too much fun up here in the broadcast booth. Almost missed the start of this third quarter. Welcome back. We're here at James Cotter Field. 13 first half goals for the Beaks in offensive eruption. Two goals apiece for Admirand, Smith, Chapman, and Wolf. You have the first Beacons goal of the career for Darian Clay. Jack Ranta, Liam Bowler getting their first goals of the season. Timothy Sullivan, a beautiful goal in front of the net. Everything's hitting right now for the Beacons. Now let's see if they bring that momentum into the second half. The vibes are good out here on Beaconville. It's a sunny Friday afternoon, spring break about to get started, and Ranta racing down the field, and the shot goes just wide. Jack Ranta vying for his second goal in the game end of the season, and he misses that one, but the Beacons peppering Luke Bolin. 32 shots now on goal. Or 32 shots toward the goal. Beauregard gets cut off, but he keeps the left-handed shot alive. Save made by Bolin. Two big saves in the first 25 seconds of this half. And I do believe winning the race to the ball was Norwich. Yes, it was Anthony Larson getting there first, so ball back to the cadets. Good 25 seconds of defense there to get this period started for the cadets, and now they're back on the front foot trying to slim down this 11-goal deficit. Larson throws that one away. He was looking in the direction of Jack Haley, and I think Haley cut in a little too fast for Larson. By the time the pass was made, it was behind Haley, out of his reach. And so we're 40 seconds into this half, and we have a turnover apiece for each team. Here's Chapman. He'll float the pass over to Luke Murphy. You see Luke Murphy set up deep in the offensive zone for the Beacons here. And he'll walk it back out. Obviously, the Beacons not going to be pushing the tempo too hard here. Chapman had a beautiful angle on that shot and missed it about five inches too high over the crossbar. That was a shot there to be had. Now, remember, folks, what this second half might turn into, you have four different Beacons on a hat trick watch right now. And it might be a race to see who can get their third goal first. Chapman, back to Murphy. Over to Liam Bowler. Bowler fakes the pass right, goes back to Murphy. It frees up Chapman at the top of the zone. No shot there. Murphy goes to Admiran. He's got some room to operate behind the goal at the X. Has Wolf to his right, but he's looking left. Now we'll pass it off to Wolf. Wolf to Bowler. Beacon's really milking this shot clock here. They're down to 28 seconds. Bowler over to Murphy on the right wing. Murphy to Admiran. Admirand across the field to Chapman. Chapman's going to get to spin around. Angled shot and another save from Boland. Three shots, three saves here in this third quarter. Chapman back out to Murphy. Down low to Chapman. He fakes the pass. There's 50 on the shot clock again. Admirand trying to free up some room. Admiran playing a great decoy there away from the play now as Chapman's going to have some room to operate. Shot, he pulls it wide to the left. He cocked that one back and had it ready to fire for a while. And Clayton Caesar had to make up his mind on whether or not I want to try and block that shot or do I get out of the way. That pass from Smith, he threw it away. It was intercepted by Mason McMahon. McMahon having a really nice afternoon in spite of the scoreline right now. He's been where he's needed to be. Jackson Bamfield, he's done a really nice job moving the ball into the attack zone for the Cadets. But he threw it away. That pass was intended for Bagwell, and it skips ahead all the way to Liam Bowler. Bowler through the middle. Bowler gets the pass, slipped over to Wolf, and the save made by Boland. He is four for four in shots on goal. But the pass thrown away, and Admiran the save again. Flag down, I believe it might be a push on the back side of the play against the Cadets, but oh my goodness, is this goalie, Luke Boland, having himself an afternoon. The sophomore out of Tolan, Connecticut, five saves on five shots here in this third quarter, and the Beacons, how close can you get without getting it past number 23, having himself a lovely afternoon. So it's going to be a cross-check against number seven, Gavin Youngclaws. One of three members of the Youngclaws family out here this afternoon. So it's a cross-check, and now the Beacons with a man up. Just one man up goal this afternoon for the Beaks. They're one of three in man up opportunities. Admirand, back to Bowler. Here's Chapman. Another shot, he misses wide again, and Charlie... Maybe trying a little too hard here to connect in from those outside ciders. That one goes wide. Smith first to it. 
It's still in about 50 seconds on this man-up opportunity. Admiran's going to let it rip, and another save. Six for six for Luke Bolin. He had his eyes on that one all the way. And the Beacon's just trying to connect from long range here on this man-up opportunity. Couldn't make anything happen. Nice defense there from Luke Murphy to knock the ball out of possession of Cyrus Goulet. And now Bowler. Busy afternoon for him. Smith, low shot, misses it wide to the right. It looks like Murphy's closest to it. He is. The Beacons letting it rip at the start of this third quarter. We're not even three and a half minutes in. They've taken eight shots. Six of them have gotten to Luke Boland. He's made saves on all six of them. Make it seven as that bouncer is tipped up on the bowler shot. Wolf's there. He'll scoop it. Just nine seconds left on this man-up opportunity. Beacon's not really worried about getting the goal with the man up here. On to the field for the cadets. But here's Admiran, a lot of room, bouncer, and it goes just high. You gotta like what Admiran had in mind right there. He goes low, tries to bounce it in over Bolin because Bolin's seeing everything. But he puts the shot into the turf too low, and it skips up over the head of Bolin. He'll try again from the left wing, angling in, and it's a deflected away from McMahon. It'll be another penalty against Norwich, and so the Beacons... 0 of 2 in their last two man-up opportunities. 1 of 4 with a man up today, and they'll get yet another chance here to try and finally score their first goal of this third period. It's been sitting at 13-2 for quite a bit here at Cotter Field. First indications, it looks like big number 34, Josh McQuinn, headed into the sin bin. So assuming this is just going to be just a push, Loud crowd behind us is making it kind of difficult here to figure out what is what officially. So it's going to be a one minute unreleasable penalty. A legal contact to the head is the official call against Joshua McQuinn. And so the Beacons now with the man up. McQuinn will be free at the 10 minute mark here in the third quarter. Beaks just one of four with the man up here. Vying for their second man up goal. It was Liam Bowler scoring the goal with the man up back in the second quarter. Admiran looking in the direction of the aforementioned Bowler. Around the perimeter we go. Murphy back towards Chapman. No, it's to Smith. Smith long shot and he scored. Oh my goodness. Connor Smith, how are you tucking that one home? Off the top crossbar, off the right post, and in. And that's an unreleasable penalty, so the Beacons still have 46 more seconds with a man up. If you had Connor Smith as your first Beacon with a hat trick today, congratulations. For the third time today, and the 12th time this season, Connor Smith finding Twine. It's a man up goal, and the Beacons are up 12. It's 14 to 2. 12 on the season now. So Admiran with 15, Connor Smith with 12, Chapman up to 8. The offense finding its rhythm in the nick of time here in this non conference game. McNeeny, another face off win. He got an assist from a situation like this earlier. That shot deflected in front. As we get our first look at Jacob Banks back onto the field. 39 goal scorer last season, back from his hockey absence. He's on the field. He almost got himself a goal. Admiran, low angled shot, he misses wide. That was a beautiful bouncer. Banksy's closest to it, and so he'll take it out from the back quarter. Aaron Broom in front of us here, he's waiting for the go ahead. He still has 20 seconds. The Beacons have already scored once in this penalty. Murphy. Looking back for Bowler, instead Admirand with his toes near the crease, has Bowler, rips it, he scores again! The second goal of the afternoon, the second goal from this specific penalty, and Liam Bowler finds Twine in the top left corner. Nine seconds left on this penalty, that goal scored at the 4.51 mark for the second time today. And the second time this season, it's Liam Bowler, both of his goals coming with a man up. So the Beacons are now up 15-2. to two. That 13-goal lead, their largest of the afternoon. Five goal scorers now with at least two goals. You have Connor Smith with a hat trick. Gavin Admiran, Charlie Chapman, Greg Wolf, and now Liam Bowler, all with two. Infraction against the Beacons on that faceoff. Nine seconds left on the penalty here, so we're about to be back at even strength lacrosse. Jack Haley onto the ball at the midfield logo. Referee winds his arm, and we are underway. Fresh off of the second Liam Bowler goal of the afternoon. McKay onto the field. 
and all the personnel back onto the field for the cadets. It's Matt Meehan. Now 20 yards away from the net, flips the pass over to Mitchell McKay. McKay fronted by Justin McCullough. He spins him all the way back towards the midfield logo. McKay doesn't want to dodge down the right sideline. Instead, he goes back in the direction of Johnston. Alex Johnston asking for the screen from McKay. It doesn't free up much. Right-handed cradle dodging in down the sideline. Passes it back to Seidel. Seidel all the way back out up top to Jack Haley. Haven't heard much out of Haley yet. Goes low and the save is made by Trevor Coffey. This game's got to feel good for Trevor Coppy. He's only let two goals get past him. That is now his 11th save of the afternoon. Murphy to McCullough. And a nice body check there by Clayton Caesar, separating McCullough from the ball. And here come the cadets. Tyler Seidel fakes the pass over his shoulder. He'll opt to carry it behind the net. Spinning. Spins back. Patrick Colbrun locking him up. Nowhere to go for Seidel. So all the way back out to the top of the perimeter go the cadets. And it's Matt Meehan. Once again, he's about 25 yards away from net. Right-handed dodge, but he has Carey and Murphy on his shoulder. Nowhere to go. Got to like this if you're Beacon's coaching staff right now. Just sitting on this lead. Letting Norwich try and find their opportunities. Aren't many to be had. And now Carey dispossesses Meehan. Meehan doesn't even go to pick up his stick. He's frustrated with himself to say the least. Carey looks over. Murphy, nifty pass and it's Banks in front. Welcome back, Jacob Banks. As Luke Murphy, another assist. They were running right down the middle of the field. He slips open in front of the net. He scored 39 goals in just 15 games last season. And he gets his first this year. Ooh, the offensive party in full motion as Banks from Murphy puts the Beacons up by 14 with 8-14 left to go in the third quarter. It's, it's such a funny, interesting scenario when you have these two sport athletes, and the Beacons on this lacrosse team feature too. Carson Mezawar, a true freshman, a very important midfielder, and Jacob Banks, one of the best and definitely probably the most clutch goal scorers for the Beacons last season. Hadn't been able to transition onto the team yet because of his stay on the hockey team. He had a phenomenal year on the ice for the Beacons this year. Now he's on the field again, and he gets his first goal of the season in this, his junior campaign. We got our first look at number 66, Hunter Dixon. True freshman attack man out of Valley Falls, New York. Dixon, left-handed cradle, dodges in behind the net. Low pass, but it's corralled cleanly by Bagwell. But his pass floated back in the direction of Dixon. It's tipped and it's picked up by Sean Culla. Culla back to Copy. And now Copy, he might want to send this up. Instead, he passes it ahead to Matt Laverty. Here's Matt Laverty, the true freshman out of Barnstable, Mass. He's looked so good in this his first season out here on the peninsula. He turns that one over there as he tried to take on three cadet defenders. Long shot and another save by Trevor Copy. This time Matt Meehan was vying for the long goal and Copy standing tall, his 12th save of the afternoon. You guys can see the score bug. He's only let two pass. A phenomenal showing after a couple of tough outings for the senior out of Attleboro, Massachusetts coming to play today. Seven minutes left here in the quarter. Mezawar. Dodging in, Mezawar trying to get his first goal of the season. He hits the deck, and that's in. Give it to him. Carson Mezawar with his first career Beacons goal. And everybody's showing up to the offensive party. Two goals in a row, scored by two sports athletes. And it's Carson Mezawar at the 8.04 mark, giving the Beacons a 15-goal lead. How about that? For the first time this season, and the first time in his Beacons career, and hitting the gritty, it's Carson Mezawar giving the Beacons a 17-2 lead. I hope the camera got it. I don't know if either of our cameras got that, but we all know that that just happened, and the Beacons are up by 15. It's 17-2. So let the, let the legend show that after scoring his first collegiate goal on a beautiful dodge in front, Carson Mezawar celebrating with a gritty. Beacons get the ball off the faceoff in fraction, and now here's Luke Murphy. He has a goal and three assists today. That pass tipped back in the direction of Beauregard. Connor Smith hustling, and Smith's going to get there in time. Love the hustle out of the grad student from Oakland, Maine, to keep that one in the zone. So now Beauregard. Haven't seen uh, anything out of Nolan Beauregard yet. He's been a very productive player throughout the first four games of the season. Hitting the deck and almost getting that shot in near the right post, but it's going to be another save for Boland, who is 
just had his hands full all day today. Here's Gavin Youngclaws. Room to shoot, and he just misses high. Pulls that one just tightly over the top left corner. He saw his lane. He took it, and that shot misses just high and wide to the left. Got to hand it to the cadets here. Their bench still very much into it, still very animated, cheering the boys along. Trailing by 15, you sure they just want to see a couple fine twine to feel better about themselves for their next matchup on the season. Matt Meehan, he's had the ball quite a bit, hasn't been able to do anything with it this afternoon. Bagwell has scored both of the goals for the cadets today. Hands it off to Meehan. Meehan, a right-handed cradle around the top of the perimeter. Around Murphy. Thought about the long-angled shot. Goes back and passes it away. Passes it away high. That's going to go out of bounds. Right there to scoop it up is Jacob Banks. How about the thought of this? This second line of the Beacons offense. So dangerous. You have Colin Ford out there as well. He's charging in. Chops his feet. Dumps the pass ahead to Banks. And the save is made from Boland. That would have been a beautiful assist there from Colin Ford as he saw what Jacob Banks was doing. But the ball stolen away by Admirant. Gavin. He has two goals today. Can he get three? No, instead, how about Connor Smith? And he goes behind the back. The fourth goal of the afternoon for Smith. One for the highlight reel as he took his time with that one. He cocked the normal shot and then went behind the back for the fourth goal of the game for Smith. He has 13 on the season now, and the Beacons continue to run it up. It's 18-2, to two, still more than 20 minutes left. That goal scored at the 9.38 mark. Connor Smith... Oh, that's some nifty mitts right there. So the fourth goal of the afternoon for Connor, his 13th of the season. He's now two behind the pace of Gavin Admirand. What a game we are seeing here. Hendricks, he scored his second goal of his Beacons career earlier today. He's on the field, ducking inside, getting underneath the stick of Jackson Batzell. And sees he'll wind it off to the left. Going to take on Batzell one-on-one. -on -one. Chops past him. Thought about the right-handed angle shot. It wasn't there to be had. Slips it back out to Chapman. Chapman all the way across to Mesawar, who just scored his first collegiate goal. Behind the net to Smith. Smith, oh, tried to go with a flip-angled shot. Connor Smith going deep into his bag this afternoon already with four goals, and that would have been another one to remember there for number five. Instead, it misses high. Admiran goes right back to Cesar Hendricks. 41 on the shot clock here for Cesar. He has Zach Mann to his left. Instead, he chops around Batzell. He gets all the way around him. Shot misses near post. He tried to pull that one into the near top right corner. Misses wide. Ball picked up by Connor Smith. 34 on the shot clock. They'll go right back to Caesar. Hendricks working on Batzell. Looks for the pass towards the middle of the field. Has Chapman from the perimeter. Give it to him. Off the left post it in. And Charlie Chapman. Feeling the turf there as he gets this game's second hat trick. At the 10.40 mark in the third quarter, we still have 26 minutes of lacrosse to play. Oh, pardon me, my math is wrong there. We still do have 19 minutes of lacrosse to play. The Beacons with 19 goals as Charlie Chapman for the third time today and the ninth time this season finds Twine. It is, and this is not a typo, 19-2 Beaks. Everybody really giddy on the Beacon sideline here as Smith trying again for goal number five. Everybody just wanting to get into the action here. Third goal of the game, ninth of the season for Chapman. Sullivan scored earlier. He goes behind the back and almost tucks that one inside the post. If you are the Beacons at this point, you know that the Beaks like to try and keep the offense with the full throttle down all 60 minutes. And so, especially considering the slow start the Beacons got off to this season, not going to expect Coach Lowe to really call off the dogs anytime soon this afternoon here. Mainly first liners still on the field. A couple of second liners. This is Mick Flynn. Flynn has two goals on the season. Yet to score today. He might be trying to get into the action. Slips the pass behind to Smith. Smith dodging from the X. Lost it for a second, gets it back, gets it to Sullivan. Nice hands there by Beauregard. That pass got into his body more than he expected, and he finds Twine! Quick shot there, he showed off the nifty hands to corral the pass in from Smith, and then he turns and finds Twine again. It's another point for Connor Smith with an assist, and it's the first goal of the day and the fourth goal of the season for Nolan Beauregard. That goal coming at the 11.32 mark. 
He is a super talented freshman. He wasted no time letting that shot go. And it's his fourth goal of the season. He now has six points of the year. Yet another assist to Connor Smith, who's really tallying up the points this afternoon. It's 20 to two beaks, and we still have 3.30 left to go in the third quarter. Lucozzi can't win that faceoff. Instead, it's Thomas Moraski with the win. But he carries it out of bounds. And so the Beacons will have the ball again down the right sideline. It's Colin Ford. Ford. Chopping around Larson. Has Mann coasting in. Zach Mann. Slips the pass back to Gavin Admirant. Admirant has Smith to his left. Has Mann to his right. Mann floating around the 30-yard line here before giving it off to Colin Ford. Colin Ford in his senior season out of Worcester, Mass. Behind the net they go. Admirant to Bowler. Bowler has Banks to his right. Goes back to Admirant. A lot of room for Gavin, and he finds Twine. Top left corner. Yet another hat trick. First it was Smith, then it was Chapman, and now Gavin Admirant for the third time today and the 16th time this season finds Twine. We're having a race to the top of the scoring column here. The Beacons up 19. It's 21-2. to two. That goal scored at the 12-15 mark by Gavin Admirand. He has a hat trick. It's now three Beacon hat tricks. 16 on the year for Admirand. Smith on his heels with 13. Chapman now with nine on the season. Another face-off win for the Beaks. And Luke Murphy on the ball again. Sean Kinahan onto the pitch for the first time for the Cadets. That save made off the Murphy diving shot. Admiran has it behind the net. Banks fakes the pass to Beauregard. Goes low and he finds Twine again. It's almost impossible to believe that it took the Beacons five games to find this offense. But it is everywhere here at Cotter Field. And it's Jacob Banks, the second goal of the afternoon, the assist from Nolan Beauregard at the 12.39 mark. Timeout on the field taken by Norwood. Hate to say it, but they need it. So we'll take a quick break ourselves. The Beacons, that's not a typo. They are up 20. Beacons 22, Cadets 2. More after this on the Beacon Broadcasting Network, brought to you by LittleEast.tv. Welcome back, welcome back. Six goals in the first quarter, seven in the second quarter, and now a nine-goal third quarter for the Beaks. Finds them up 22-2, to two, and yet another face-off win for Matt Lucozzi in the center circle. He spins into two cadets, and he still keeps the ball alive on the cradle. Finally loses it right in front of us as Thomas Moraski picks it up over the shoulder to keep it in, but he throws it right to Colin Ford. And now Ford dodging on in. Right around Moraski, slips the pass into Banks. Oh, he reaches out, corralled it, almost got that shot on. Banks, I think this is his first action coming in the third quarter. And he almost scored his third goal in, what, 13 minutes of action. Smith on the ball, back to Charlie Chapman. And they'll work it all the way back to Timothy Sullivan at the top of the perimeter. Nice hands there from Mick Flynn to reach out, but then he threw the pass away. The angle works for Carey. Nice job by Pat Carey to kind of box out McKay there and keep the ball on the beacon stick. Sullivan, with a minute and a half left in the quarter, spins, hits the deck, gets it all ball over to Connor Smith. And now Smith has plenty of time to reset this offensive look. Admiran sets the screen. Sullivan 
0 for 2 there on the clean handle, but he's on the ball with 30 to shoot. All the way back up to Mick Flynn. Here's Flynn, two goals on the season. Keeps the right-handed shot alive, passes it to Dan Moran, who skies up, catches the pass, and tucks it in the back of the net. We have an injured cadet on the play. He's down and hurt, and so he's getting tended to by his teammates on the field. Man down. We're going to take a quick break. Count the goal, I think, for Gavin Admirand. But we have an injured player down on the field for Norwich. And we'll come back to you momentarily. We're going to take a quick break here. Not sure if that goal is going to count or not. So we're either dealing with 23-22 or 23-2 or 22-2. Back with more after this on the Beacon Broadcasting Network. All right, we will rejoin the action here. Man up and being helped off the field. That was a very scary play in front of the net. It's Gavin Youngclaws. He's being helped on the, off the field by his teammate Jackson Bampfield. If we see anything happening on the Norwich sideline, anything we can update for you, we will let you know he is being helped off the field. Very scary. Thought that he might have been down for even a little bit longer than that, but he's up looking tough and it looks to be that right lower leg, that right knee that he is favoring. So if we see anything, um, anything positive to report, we definitely will. He's off the field now. We're about to wind back into play. Count the goal for Gavin Admiranth. His fourth today, his 17th of the season. Flynn gets the assist. Everything working for the Beacons right now. They have scored 10 more goals here in the third quarter, and we have 71 seconds left to go. Who knows what this final quarter has in store, but the first 44 minutes have been just euphoric if you're a fan of Beacons Lacrosse. All right, Murphy picks it up. The infraction against the Cadets. Murphy looks back over his left shoulder, chops his feet. Ball cradled, met right away by Anthony Larson. Chapman chops his feet, looks for the shooting angle. That, pa that ball uh, deflected, I believe, on the way in. Banks is closest to it. Really awesome to see Jacob Banks. It looks like he hasn't missed a minute out there on the field. He winds this back into Mick Flynn. Flynn. Trying to keep that right-handed shot alive. Being pestered on the plate. Great defense from Joshua McQuinn. And so Flynn looks back in the direction of Owen Gallagher. Mick Flynn. Floats the pass to Banks. Banks thought about the long shot. This one gets tipped high up into the air. Hendricks has a beat on it. He'll keep it in the zone for the Beaks. The shot clock now under 40. And 25 seconds left to go in the quarter. Hendricks, beautiful head fake. The Juke not freeing up any room to dodge into the net with, so he'll reverse course to Owen Gallagher. Gallagher, right-handed shot low, and it's off the side of the net, but the ball's still loose. Picked up in front by Chapman. 12 seconds left in the quarter. Flynn dodging in. Mick Flynn, low to high, and it's off the post. Oh, another goal inches away for the Beaks. But Hendricks picks it up. Five to shoot. And the save is made in front of the net. New goalie here for the Cadets. As that was Eric Rabel in net for the Cadets. His first shot. He makes the save. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. Three quarters down here in Beaconville. A game to remember. And potentially maybe some history at stake. The end of the third quarter. It's the UMass Boston Beacons 23. The Norwich University Cadets 2. Fourth quarter after this on the Beacon Broadcasting Network brought to you by LittleEast.tv.
So a couple of exciting historical notes maybe to be had here in this in this contest as we enter the fourth quarter. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Del Sordo. Thank you for joining us on the Beacon Broadcasting Network, brought to you by LittleEast.tv, a game to remember. And Jason McNeely wins the faceoff, but then gets stick-checked. Nice play on the backside by Thomas Moraski, but it does stay with the Beaks. Flynn floats that pass in towards McNeeny. It's shoveled. It almost got shoveled into the net by Liam Bowler. He gets knocked down in front of the net. This will be a penalty against the Cadets and the Beacons with a man-up opportunity to be had here. Pardon me, that wasn't Bowler. That was the true freshman, Max Hamilton Jones, coming in, getting some action, and he draws that penalty. So let's see what the official word is. We had multiple flags down, at least one penalty against Norwich here, and referee making his way towards us. So it's a body check penalty against Mason McMahon. He's in the sin bin for one minute. Beacons have scored just two goals with the man up today. They are two of six in man up opportunities this afternoon. Nothing to get mad at, but if we are splitting hairs here, something to work on. Wolf on the ball here is Greg Wolf. He had two goals earlier on in the first half. Murphy looking in the direction of Mick Flynn. Slides it off to him. Back to Luke Murphy. A goal and three assists this afternoon for the All-American senior midfielder. Back to Chapman. Chapman faked the long shot. Gives it to Murphy. Murphy angled shot. Misses high and wide. It was right there to be had. Just a couple inches over the crossbar. Once again, it's a new goalie in net here for the Cadets. Number 45, Eric Rabel. From my neck of the woods. Went to Kennett High School from Chadsford, Pennsylvania. So he's in the true freshman in the crease. Flynn on the ball for the Beaks. That's a low pass. It skips behind Murphy. Luke, great effort to get to it. He keeps it in, and he gets around the connect defender. So this frees up some room for Murphy. Passes it to the top, to Chapman. Angled shot, and it's blocked right in front. Nice defensive play there by James McGee, the junior out of Concord, New Hampshire. He stepped right in front of that Chapman shot, but Chapman forces it free, and he was almost able to get himself a loose ball goal in front. Players commit. Here's Chapman, three, two, and he no, he missed wide. I swore that that one was inside the right post. You couldn't miss it any closer. It stays with the Beaks. They don't convert on the man-up opportunity, so they're now two of seven with a man-up today. But they're still deep in the zone. Flynn to Bowler. Back to Wolf. And they'll wind it all the way back out to Murphy. Murphy. Cradle. Around his mark. In close, and he pinged off the right post. Nice defense there from Clayton Caesar, keeping Murphy off to the right side of the net, and that shot pings off the right post. We're back into play right away, though. Chapman to Flynn. Flynn lost it, chops at it, and it's picked up by the Cadets. Two great plays in a row there from Clayton Caesar, and now big number one rumbling down. Chapman can't dispossess him with a stick check. Culla sticking tight on Seidel, and pardon me, that's Broden Youngclaws going down to a knee to make the save. Three different Young Claws brothers on the field today. The one that plays for UMass Boston in net right now. And Young Claws had a great second half of action against MIT. He comes in for this fourth quarter. One shot, one save. And the Cadets still stuck at two goals this afternoon. So Broden Young Claws now ball in his stick. His brother Gavin Young Claws went down earlier this afternoon. He's on the sideline right now for the Cadets. Another brother on the Cadets. Duncan, who we haven't seen on the field yet this afternoon. Nice little play there by James McGee to knock the ball away from Mick Flynn and give possession back to the Cadets. Caesar long pass. It finds Cyrus Goulet. Goulet, they give him plenty of room down the right sideline. Tries to force that pass into Seidel. Gets it to him, but now Seidel tucked deep in the corner around Murphy. Not much room to operate. He gets around Luke Murphy. Has a man to his left. It's Jack Haley. You can hear that wind picking up in my mic. It's starting to get chilly out here on the peninsula. A tougher task to stand in front of any of these hard shots coming in. Seidel working against Hendricks. Hendricks holding his own beautifully. Knocks the ball away from Seidel. And Kulla and Hendricks combine to force the turnover. Now Hendricks flipping it ahead to Pat Carey in transition. Pat Carey, so much room to operate. Passes it down low, and the shot goes high. 
Greg Wolf missed that one high. I don't know if it got deflected. It took a weird angle off the stick. You can give Pat Carey a lot of credit on that play. As he just rumbled into the open space. He finds some more open space. Tries to take on two cadets and hits the deck. Nice play there by Hempfield to dispossess him. And take it across the timeline. And here's Jackson Hempfield. We're about four minutes into this fourth quarter. Nobody's yet to score. Hempfield goes down there. Yeah, and he's hurt. For a second, I thought he went down because of the contact on the backside of the play from Holden Kuznier. Instead, that might be a little bit of non-contact there. He's up. Some nice words of encouragement from his teammates there, but you can tell Jackson Bamfield feeling that one a little bit as he's trying to jog that off. Some new personnel onto the field here for the Beacons, and this is going to be a penalty against the Beacons on that play along the sideline. So a quick discussion here from the referees, and we will get the official word. It's going to be a man-up opportunity coming for Norwich. So it's a technical 30. Okay, so it's a technical 30 against Colin Ford for offsides, but then a full one-minute penalty for a slash against Holden Kuznier. That, we knew that that penalty was going to be called. That 30 seconds against Ford is a surprise. So you have Colin Ford. He'll be free at the 10.42 mark, and then Kuznier will be free at 10.12. So the Beacons two men down right now. They were able to kill off a full two minute two men down opportunity earlier today and that shot missed wide by McKay. Matt Meehan first to it. So Colin Ford wearing number 42. He gets to leave the sin bin at 10.42 and that won't be a moment too soon as the cadets bearing in on the net here. McKay flips it back to Meehan. Meehan low shot and he finds Twine. Third goal of the afternoon there for the Cadets. It's the first of the afternoon for number three, Matt Meehan. His fourth goal of the season. And it brings the Cadets to 19 back. It's 22 to three, Beacons. That's the first goal scored in the quarter. Meehan, a junior out of Norfolk, Massachusetts. He has five assists to go along with his three goals. So he is now second on the team scoring wise with eight points. But it's his third of the year. And McNini, another face-off win. He's having a phenomenal day. Vying for a goal, and the save is made by Young. Or pardon me. That's number 45, Eric Rabel in net. That's right, for the Cadets. He makes a beautiful save, dropping down to one knee. McNini already with an assist this afternoon, vying for a goal not to be had there. Nice defense on the ball there by Jamie Lynn. Almost pokes possession free from Cadets number 29. Mason McMahon, but McMahon gets it into the zone, throws it ahead to Mason Seidel. Nice defense there from Sean Culla, trying to poke it free. Seidel does a great job keeping the stick close to his body. Beautiful job cradling and dodging for Mason Seidel. Finally, Culla almost knocked it free with the help of Matt Laverty. But it's kept in by the Cadets. Let's see. Dodging in at the last second, keeping it in is Matt Meehan. Fresh off a goal, here's Meehan down again, uh, down the left sideline again. Reverses field to Coley Bagwell. Bagwell, two of the Cadets' three goals this afternoon. Looks in. Floated shot, I, I think that was a pass in the direction of Seidel. It goes behind the net. They give him credit for the shot. It's only 20 seconds on the shot clock, though, for the Cadets here. As we're under the 10 minute mark, 9.40 on a now running clock left to go in this contest. Beacon still leading by 20, it's 23 to three. 10 third quarter goals scored by the Beacons. They haven't scored yet in this fourth quarter. Wind really ripping on through this press box here is the chill setting in on the James Cotter turf. McKay almost lost it to Carey. Carey pestering him, that's a shot clock violation and yet another turnover forced by the Beacons. That ball loose at the midfield. Mick Flynn didn't see it. He could have picked it up in a nice spot. It is chopped at by Aiden Philosh. Uh, Pardon me. Philosh had it for a quick second, but then lost it. Trying to dive in. Oh, huge collision there. And Flynn can't keep his footing against Bagwell. He almost was able to take it off Coley. But that's 
you know, one of the best ball handlers on the team for Norwich. It will be a penalty against the Beak, so it's a delayed penalty right now. McKay spinning back. He has Meehan off to his left. Instead, he tries to pass it back to McKay, and this one almost scurries out of bounds. And there we go, flag down. And so this will be a penalty against the Beacons. It's Mick Flynn. He's heading towards the sin bin. It's a technical 30 against Mick Flynn for offsides. The Beacons have done fine today defending the man up. Actually, funny enough, Norwich did score on their first man up opportunity, but since one of four, O of three since their first goal. So it's going to be 30 seconds up for Norwich. Flynn in the sin bin. Bonus points for the rhyme. He'll be free at 756. And so the Beacons just have to batten down the hatches for 25 seconds. That shot deflected on the play by Darian Clay. Beautiful on-ball defense. And now Clay slips ahead. The pass not hauled in by Murphy. And it bounces away. Takes a funny hop off the turf. That's an unforced turnover against the Beaks. But they're fighting to get it back. And it looks like Ford knocked it free. Mann picks it up. That's going to be a penalty against the Cadets. Flynn's free. So the Beacons now playing with a chance for the man up. Wolf misses high. But it will lead to a man-up opportunity for the Beacons here as there's going to be a penalty against Norwich on the backside of that play. <laughs> Waiting on the official word here. Yeah. So it's a one-minute illegal body check penalty against Johnston. That's the second time he's found himself in the sin bin. The Beaks with two man-up goals this afternoon. Both of them scored by Liam Bowler. The Beaks two of seven in their man-up opportunities. 7.52 left to go here. The Beacons erupted for 13 first-half goals, 10 more third-quarter goals. They've yet to score here in quarter number four. Gallagher over to Flynn. Flynn misses just wide to the right. But Bowler's the closest to it. He'll keep it in the zone. Some new faces out there. Bowler out there with Aiden Filosh. Owen Gallagher out there as well. And Mick Flynn. Flynn fakes the pass over to Gallagher. Goes inside to Man, and he scores! Between the legs there. What a pass from Mick Flynn to Zach Mann. He gets it in the stick for a split second and goes between the goalie's legs. Nothing Rabel could have done. It's back to a 21-goal lead as... Zach Mann scores from Mick Flynn at the 834 mark of this fourth quarter. For Zach Mann, it is his first goal of the season to go along with four assists. Beautiful assist from Mick Flynn. It's a violation against the Beaks on the faceoff. And so just coming back off the field, Jack DeFalco Wheeler, the face-off specialist from Falmouth, Mass. It's going to be a 30-second penalty, and so the fifth man-up opportunity for the cadet, pardon me, the sixth now, they are one of five in man-up opportunities for Norwich. Remember, just three goals this evening for the cadets. Matt Meehan joins the attack. He scored the most recent goal for Norwich. Bagwell. And back up top, they go to Jack Haley. Near corner pass, finds me in behind the net. He goes back up top. Johnston thought about the shot, goes right-handed side. Save made on the play by another new goalie. We have Otto Kierless in net for the Beacons now. So Young Claus plays an effective five minutes in net. He gives way to Kierless. All right, man back on, and that shot is saved. The ball picked up in front of the net, almost tucked in by Filosh. The save made again, and finally back the other way come the cadets and Clayton Caesar. Caesar, you can't miss him wearing that number one. He's held down his end of the fort on defense for the cadets. Just wish their execution in the offensive zone could have been better for his efforts. Seidel over to Meehan. Man down in front of us is Jack Haley. Hope he's okay. So he kind of went down with a heap immediately after coming off the field. Meehan behind the net. Fakes the pass. Looks over to his left. You have basically 
the top line of midfield and attack men on the field right now for the cadets going up against the second and third string for the beacons and still just one goal for each team here in this fourth quarter nice nifty hands there by coley bagwell to reach up and snag that one he gets around gallagher lefty shot misses just wide Kearley's had a read on that one from far out, but Bagwell threatening again. He does have two goals this afternoon, coming into action with eight. Have to assume that he's going to try and get out of here with at least a hat trick to his name. Johnston back on it. Well, nice play there to get right around Shane McGonigal, and he'll score right in front. Tough body goal there by big number 32, Andrew Johnston. He finds Twine, but it's just the fourth goal of the contest for the Norwich Cadets. For Alex Johnston, he didn't have any goals up until this point. One goal now to go along with five assists on the season. He has six points, and so big number 32 with his first goal of the year at the 9-10 mark, and it brings the Cadets back to within 20. It's 24-4. Get a new game ball into the mix right now. Four goals scored for the new Norwich University Cadets. Coley Bagwell scored in the first quarter. That made it a 3-1 game. From that point on, it was really all beacons. They scored eight straight after that. Bagwell scored again in the second quarter. And you have Meehan and Johnston with goals here in the fourth quarter. That's a big save from Kearlees. Keeping the Cadets out of the net again. And then he launches it down the field. Here we go. Beacons pushing the tempo again as Max Hamilton Jones in the midfield spot hands it over to Owen Gallagher. Gallagher back to Beauregard. Here's Nolan. He has a goal this afternoon. Gets around his first mark, trying for the long shot. Keeps his cradle alive. Goes left handed and scores five hole. Nolan Beauregard, another one. And that was pretty unassisted, all individual effort. And he ducks back to the left side, goes low, and scores again. He is a true freshman who now has five goals on the year. Two today. Five on the season, Nolan Beauregard at the 9.44 mark. And the Beacons back up 21. It is 25-4. So many multi-goal scorers now this afternoon for the Beaks. Connor Smith leading everyone with four. That face-off corralled by DeFalco Wheeler. He wins it. Has to chop at it to keep it in bounds. He's being assisted deep down there by David Omen. Omen can't scoop it. Let's see what that whistle is. On the back side of the play, the referee has a call. And the ball will go to the beak. So that's going to be a face-off win for Jack DeFalco Wheeler. Got to feel good for the true freshman. And it sets up another offensive opportunity here for the Beaks, who are leading by 21, tied for their largest lead of the contest. Hendricks. Fakes the pass to his left. Goes down in front. Over the shoulder. It's a beautiful goal for Mick Flynn. Caesar Hendricks another point this afternoon. He gets the assist as Mick Flynn scores his first. He just had an assist earlier on the goal to Zach Mann. It's his first of the day. His third of the season. At the 10-17 mark, Mick Flynn from Caesar Hendricks. And the fun continues, folks. 26 goals now for the Beaks. They're up 22. It's 26-4. DeFalco Wheeler back there in the circle, and he gets another win. This one picked up and ran out of trouble by Shane McGonigal. He flips it over to Zach Mann. Mann, behind the net. Passes it all the way out to Flynn with a head full of steam. Goes high to low. Shot is deflected. Sullivan picks it up. He can't get the shot off. Ball is high and loose. No one knows where it is. It's behind the net. Mann picks it up to Flynn. Gallagher wants it on the far side of the field. Flynn gets it to him. Gallagher, let's see what he's got in mind. Chop step, right-handed dodge, shot, misses low. Big save there made by Rabel, but Sullivan right back on it. Sullivan, one of the few players with the black frame and the black netting on his stick. You can pick him out there. Loves to dodge in towards the net, and he goes low, and he hits the post. That was a creative shot there from Timothy Sullivan, the underhanded opportunity, but he hits it off the left post, and we'll go back the other way. Head full of steam for Aaron Broom, right into the middle. Slides the pass over to Seidel. Oh, and I thought the Beacons forced the turnover there, but that will be 
a penalty against UMass Boston. See a wholesale personnel change here as all the defensive players back onto the field for the Beaks. The score, 26 to four. Here we go, four goals apiece for Connor Smith and Gavin Admiran, Charlie Chapman with three, two goals apiece for Liam Bowler, Jacob Banks, Greg Wolf, and Nolan Beauregard. And how about this? Caesar Hendricks, Luke Murphy, Jack Ranta, Mick Flynn, Zach Mann, Carson Mesawar, and Timothy Sullivan, all with a goal apiece. What a fun afternoon of lacrosse here. It's going to be a cross check against Max Hamilton Jones. So he's in the box for one minute. He'll be free at the 242 mark. Got to think he wants to be able to get back out there and get some run in this contest. The true freshman out of Saratoga Springs, New York. But as it is, he's in the sin bin right now. Seidel. Behind the net they go. This is Bagwell deep in the corner. Just not much opening up for the big goal scorer for Norwich this afternoon. Spinning around. Nice dodge there by Seidel. Back to McKay. Johnston. He just scored the most recent goal for the Cadets. He goes left-handed. Misses it. Low into the right. Kearley's had a read on it, but that was a hot shot coming in from Johnston. Ball stays with the Cadets. 53 on the shot clock. Seidel flips it out to me and me and low shot. He misses wide to the right, and it looks like Bagwell will be there for it. It kind of feels like at this point, we look over at the scoreboard, there's three minutes left in this contest. Even at this point, it feels like the Cadets, a little bit of just running through the motions here right now. This is a man-up opportunity for them. Hamilton Jones, about 20 more seconds in the sin bin here as that shot bounced over Kearley's. Two shots there for McKay. Back around the perimeter we go with the ball back in play. Johnston to Bagwell. Bagwell gets cut off on the play by Matt Laverty. Laverty was on the bench for a lot of the third quarter. I don't think they thought they needed him, but now with such a big lead, he's a true freshman. Might as well let him get his minutes. Ford onto the pitch for Hamilton Jones, but a nice goal right in front there. The second of the afternoon for Alex Johnston just pops open right in front of the net. Quick pass finds him in front, and the big midfielder out of Franklin, Tennessee, Williamson County, how are you doing? Into the scoring column for the second time this afternoon. Alex Johnston, his second goal now of the contest and of the season. That goal coming at the 1227 mark and it brings the cadets back to within 21 the score beacons 26 cadets 5 johnston joining bagwell as the two multi-goal scorers this afternoon for the cadets how about colin ford lowering the boom right there and decleating christopher parker and now lynn a quick pass to flynn flynn shot misses just high and wide we could have had a Lynn to Flynn assist to goal right there. Instead, it's the Beacons with the ball. 70 on the shot clock, 2.15 left to play. Owen Gallagher. As we come on the two-minute mark left in this contest, Gallagher, right-handed cradle. Beacons trying to add on to this 21-goal lead. It's 26 to 5. Flynn has Hendricks to his right. Gets destroyed in the middle of the field. His pass misdirected but it stays with the beacons mesawar deep in the corner now has it he has Felosh to his left they go back up to hendrix at the top of the offense hendrix dodging in fakes the pass skirts to his right gets knocked off but he keeps the ball back to gallagher shot scores owen gallagher quick rip and it is another caesar hendrix assist what a playmaker and distributor this true freshman is becoming for Owen Gallagher, the sophomore out of Worcester, Mass. He finds Twine. It's his second point of the season and his first goal of the season. At 13-24, Owen Gallagher from Caesar Hendricks. And the fun continues. The Beacon's up now to 27. They're back on that 22-goal lead. It's 27-5. Nice play there by Jack DeFalco Wheeler, who's really having a nice day in the faceoff circle. All three faceoff specialists arrived today for the Beacons. And that one's just plucked out of midair, not quite corralled. DeFalco Wheeler almost with a defensive stop. Bounce shot and a goal right in front of the net for the Cadets. That's number 22, Chris Smith. 
the junior out of Dawsonville, Georgia. He's been around the net a couple of times today, seeing his first action of the season, and he scores a goal in this, his first game of the year. At the 13-43 mark, it's Chris Smith of Norwich with his first goal of the season. Beacons 27, Cadets 6. Everybody going through the motions here is it's DeFalco Wheeler lining up against, I can't tell if that's Muraski or, it wouldn't be Kelleher. It is Muraski. So it's DeFalco Wheeler against Muraski in the faceoff circle. About 117 left to go and Chris Smith, the most recent goal scorer for the Cadets. DeFalco Wheeler had it for a split second. It spilled out of his stick and it was picked up quickly by Mason McMahon. McMahon, the long stick, he takes it right into the attack zone. He's back on the ball as Coley Bagwell joins the fun. Hot on his tail is David Omen. So Bagwell spins it back. We're under the one minute mark. 58 seconds left to go on a running clock. Beautiful pass down low. Big save in front. Another uh, huge play is that's another new goalie into the mix. Avery Sears, the true freshman. He makes the big save in front on Seidel. That ball bounced in low, misses the net. Meehan has it behind. And the pass intended towards the middle of the field. It squirts over to... Bagwell ultimately because Matthew Hannon had some quick hands right place right time but Matt Laverty scoops it up as Bagwell couldn't corral it in bounds Laverty over to Jamie Lynn Lynn into the middle of the field passes it down low quick pass from Mezawar to Gallagher and they score Lynn to Mezawar to Owen Gallagher and he just scored a minute ago at the 14 39 mark Owen Gallagher for the second time today and the second time this season on the Carson Mezawar assist. And the Beacons do hit that 28-goal number. If nothing else, that's a beautiful, symmetrical seven goals a quarter. The offense has been hot all night long. 13 first-half goals, 15 second-half goals, and now 22 seconds separating the Beacons from their second win of the season. Another face-off win for DeFalco Wheeler. Plays it back to Omen. And this will more or less do it. Hamilton Jones gets dispossessed at the midfield logo. Maybe one rush back down the field for the cadets here. Seidel, long shot, misses wide to the left. Four seconds left for one last opportunity for the cadets here. And the Beacons win the race to the ball. And so that will do it. Patrick McCoy will get to flip this one in. And he'll run out the clock here at Cotter Field for the second time this season. <laughs> The Beacons victorious, and they move to a 2-3 and three record thanks to the 28-6 win over the Norwich University Cadets. That does it here. Final score, Beacons 28, Cadets 6. Don't go far. We'll be right back with the final stats summary and the final scoring summary after this on the Beacon Broadcasting Network, brought to you by LittleEast.tv. Sorry about losing the camera, folks. We're still here with you. Don't go far. We'll have the final summary stats momentarily. Thanks for sticking with us here at Cotter Field. The Beacons now 2-3 and three on the season with a glorious thumping of the Norwich University Cadets. The Beacons go into the locker room, all smiles as we head into spring break. 
Beacons win 28 to 6. You take a look at the side by side statistics. The Beacons out shooting the Cadets, and it felt like 54 more shots. 85 shots this afternoon, 22 finding the target. 13 saves made by the Beacons. That was four different goalies making saves. 21 saves made between Rabel and Boland for the Cadets. The Beacons dominating in the faceoff circle. They win 27 of the 38 faceoffs this afternoon, and they scoop up 15 more ground balls than the Cadets, winning that battle 54 to 40. Real quick run through the scoring summary here for the Cadets of Norwich University. Both Alex Johnston and Coley Bagwell with two goals apiece. Matt Meehan with one, and Chris Smith with one. One, those were the four goal scorers for the Cadets. For the Beacons, buckle up, 28 goals. So many different goal scorers here. So here you go. Connor Smith and Gavin Admiran each leading the way with four goals. Charlie Chapman with three. Owen Gallagher with two. Liam Bowler, two and two assists. Same numbers for Greg Wolf, two and two assists. Jacob Banks, welcome back with two. Nolan Beauregard with two. Caesar Hendricks, a goal and four assists. Luke Murphy, a goal and three assists. Flynn and Mesawar, each with a goal and two assists. And then a goal apiece for Jack Ranta, Zach Mann and Timothy Sullivan. And that'll do it for us this afternoon as we take a look ahead at the lacrosse scheduler, pardon me, for the Beaks as they head down to Florida. Two games in Florida. They take on FDU Florham and Lake Forest on the 14th and 16th, respectively. And then we're into LEC conference play when we get back from Florida. That will do it for us here on the Beacon Broadcasting Network, uh, there are a couple of names I should probably shout out. Georgia Bonnie was to my right on the camera. Elena Albano was to my left. I don't know what we have her on. I think I think it says director. She literally did everything for us today, producer, director, TD. So, Elena, as always, thank you so much. My name's Chris Del Sordo. I had a blast calling this game for you guys today. I hope you had as much fun watching it. Beacons in Florida, and then they will be back in a week and a half with more lacrosse here on Beacon.